Now, for those of you who were just listening to the gentleman talking about the depths that we can reach in American education, there's a couple of people who didn't do too badly. As a matter of fact, when I introduce you to Randall Alley, he's a certified prosthetist. 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 I've yep. never had occasion in my 400 years of doing this to say that word on the air. And <laughs> Congratulations. I'm going to do it several times. Prosthetist. Very good. Okay, all right. An inventor of the high fidelity interface, which sounds like something that the Bose sound system people would love to have, <laughs> but it has nothing to do with that because Mr. Noble here, Ben Noble, How is very, very happy that it has changed his life. You talk about the, uh, about the specific item here as we get a shot sure. of what you invented and Ben uses. Okay. Um, the, the main idea behind this is that generally typical sockets that connect the leg to the uh, prosthesis, for example, are round and conical in nature and very generic. And so that allows a lot of the bone to move around inside. Something is processed we typically ignore. Now, what we're able to do is by alternating compression and release, we can actually mimic osseointegration, which is the direct contact to bone, and actually get a lot of the benefits from uh, connecting to that bone, but from the outside in without surgery. How did you know that? See, if Ben comes over and knocks on Randall's door, he's going to want to know that somebody knows what he's talking about. What did you Absolutely. do before you invented this? I was a kinesiologist from UCLA, oh. and biomechanically, that, that was what I was really interested in, is the biomechanics of prosthetics. And I was always interested in the connection, not just the components, which usually are the ones that get the most attention in prosthetics, is the ankle, the foot, the knee. And what, I, what I'm interested in was the connection to that limb. Well, and Ben, what is your connection to Randall, and how did you get here? I want to find out about the accident. Um, uh, it was uh, October 24th in 2006, and uh, I had been here for uh, 10 months. I here was in on, the Valley? Yep. I had moved here from Maine. Uh, kind of got away from my mom, so I decided what better way uh, to do my independence but get a motorcycle, right? So I was coming home from work. And, I'm sorry. Uh, I, that's what it is. What though, kind I mean, of logical thought is that? Well, hey, hey you know. I'm going to be an independent soul. I'm going to get a motorcycle. Yeah, she can't say no if uh, she's on the other side of the country. So <laughs> I was on my way home from work, and uh, I was going up 7th Street, and I uh, just got to the intersection of 7th and Coulter, and I was going northbound. A lady coming southbound didn't see me in the intersection, and she turned in front of me. Did you lose your leg at the accident scene, or did they um, have to take it? Pretty much. I mean, it was it was just barely on. Um, the doctors, I went to St. Joe's, and they're amazing. Um, they ended up uh, saving my leg. I had it for about five days, but the damage was just, it was too much. Um, I, I lost all circulation, and they ultimately, you know, gave me the choice of uh, die with the leg or live without it. So, I mean, how long did no it take brain. you for your mother to call from Maine and say, I told you so? <laughs> you know what? That's one of the first things I thought when I was, I was awake the whole time and I was laying there and I'm like, Oh my, my mom is going to kill me, you know? Cause she's like, you know, you can have it, but just make sure you don't get hurt. I'm like, ah, she that'll must be never pretty happen. Proud. She must be pretty proud of what you've she done, is. what Randall she has is. done for you. Yes. Um, you know, I had a, a great prosthetist before, and my problem is that I've just gained so much weight. Um, I've gained so much weight, and I actually brought an old socket and uh, to kind of give you an idea of what it is. Yeah, please, the guys will get shots and of this that is, if you just hold it up. It's just, it's, it's a bucket. That's how I, I, I don't, I'm not as technical as him. So yeah. I think of it as kind of <laughs> like a bucket. And because I'm, I, I've got so much extra weight, it just kind of moves around inside of it. And it, you know, it's not comfortable. I get a lot of this motion. My foot kind of goes all around. With this, where it, you know, really locks into the, the, goes through the fat and gets into the muscle and the bone, it locks in and it really, you know, it's more stable and it's more efficient, you know. Is I it comfortable? It is. It is. Um, it's really tight and it's, it's something that you got to get used to. But now I don't even notice it. I mean, it's something that once you get used to it, you just never even think about it. I'm a slave to the technician, so allow me this. Guys, is it okay if Ben stands up? Can can he do that here? Okay. Yeah. Would you just go ahead and put that down? Yeah. And stand up. And I don't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. Okay. There we go. Now, is there a certain normalcy to your walking? Yeah, I, I actually just threw my back out, of course, right before I came. 
But typically, yeah, I still at the time. Ben, this isn't the way we usually welcome visitors from Maine. I want you to know that. Jeez. But uh, yeah, so I, I still use a cane. Yeah. Um, you know, but through walk therapy and stuff, my goal to myself is by uh, my birthday, which is in November, to be completely 100% reliant on my prosthetic. So it's just going to take uh, time getting into walk therapy and trusting again. Did you put the so weight on, by the way, because of all the hospital stay? Um, that and then just the lack of exercise and yeah. mobility being in the chair. Okay, listen, so. you take a seat so that I can talk to Randall too yeah. about is this something that would be um, uh, recommended to most people who are going to have to make that decision about the loss of a leg and using a prosthetic device? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's not, there's no contraindication, meaning we have not yet found a patient who's not a candidate, and that includes upper limb as well. The, the theory is very simple. It's control the bone inside. Don't just surround the limb with, with a bucket, as, as Ben said. So the hi-fi then, as you call it, uh, is something that you can reasonably say is for everyone? Absolutely. Do you get a lot of, uh, lot of contact with veterans? Yes, in fact, we get calls from all around the globe. and We have lots of patients that come see us from outside the U.S. as well. But this is only available where? Biodesigns in Thousand Oaks. We also have licensed partners. We're actually training additional clinicians throughout the country and around the globe in the use of this technique. But Ben had to come to Thousand Oaks. Yes. And you don't have anybody here that is qualified to, Not uh, yet. to fit this? Not yet, but Perhaps we're working on that. Perhaps as of this morning. Perhaps. Huh? All right, now, what part of this, ideally all, but what part of this might be covered by insurance? And if not all insurance, then what kind of insurance? Well, that's the nice thing about it. It's the interface, so it's not some computerized microprocessor controlled knee that costs a ton of money. It's, it's really a technique, and there is uh, ample uh, funding for prosthetic socket replacements and or new prostheses because the socket is the, essentially the core of the prosthesis. And does it remain on 24 hours a day? No, you take it off when you feel like it. You certainly don't sleep with it. Um, I haven't heard of anyone doing that yet, but uh, the idea is you, you use it when you need to use it. Uh, and if you're comfortable wearing it all day, then by all means. And the change in your life, Ben? It's just, uh, it's made walking a lot better. It's made uh, me feel like I don't have to use my wheelchair. Um, I'd kind of got to the point where I was just um, had settled into the fact that I was just going to use my wheelchair. And you still get along with your mom? Yep, I still get along with my mom. She's actually the one that found Randy. Uh, she came out oh. for a visit and uh, she's like, oh, by the way, we're going to do a Skype interview with a, a guy I met in a magazine. And I was like, what are you talking about? That's the ending of the story right there. And that's it. It's good news <laughs> at the Noble House. This is Pat yeah. McMahon. <laughs> good news is you stuck around to find out about it on the morning scramble.